So the traditional 10 one drops, three voice resurgence, three fleece main lion, three call of the conclave, four slicing charm, four advent of the worm, three banishing light, three a Johnny call of the pride, and then four smiters along with 23 lands, two of which are temples of plenty. Yeah, and then Jessup is playing mono blue devotion, pretty stock. You're not going to see too much deviation there. He does have the ninth 1 1 flyer in Gale Rider Sliver. Two rapid hybridizations, one cyclonic rift, one hollow triumph, two Biden of Thassa, 25 land, including the one Nykthos. So pretty standard. I think things favor Jessup. We'll see, actually, I think what's going to be interesting to see who's going to be on the play first. Uh, I think that it's Jessup as he's looking at his hand here. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe Snow is mulliganing his hand. Uh, we will get informed on that here in just a second. And Snow is mulliganing, so that means that he is likely to be on the play here. Again, things are pretty tough for him traditionally in this matchup, but as you mentioned, Mono Blue hasn't really gotten any new cards, and Green White has, oddly enough, been getting by Mono Blue a little bit more often now than before. Yeah, and I think something like Banishing Light is just kind of innocuous, but it does a lot of work at fighting both Thassa and Master of Wades, which are the best cards in the matchup, probably, from the Mono Blue side. It's a big card. We'll see if Snow's able to draw one of his three over the course of this match. Yeah, we'll I mean, sometimes you don't even need them. You just curve out. Maybe have a Selesnia Charm to get in like the last few points of trample damage, and, and that's it, you know? Unfortunately for Snow here, he kind of got the pair down, so wasn't able to draw in. Got paired against the 7 1 and 1. See if his mana cooperates with him. And we have a Plains and a Soldier of the Pantheon. We are off to the races here. Jessup will draw a card. It's an island. So let's see what he can put together here. And he will just pass the turn, so no one drop here. So Snow gets to be aggressive. Yeah, and Soldier is just pretty good in this matchup in general because it's typically things like Frostburn Weird and Nightfell Spectre that hold the aggressive creatures at bay, but Soldier just gets right through those. An attack for two puts Jessup down to 18. A call of the Conclave will come in now. So we have a 3 3 Centaur token on the loose. We'll see if we do have one of those among our token stock or if we'll have to fire Andrew Shroud. We fired Shroud a couple times already. Okay. So. Not surprising. There's a Tidebinder Mage. That's a beaten. That is a beaten. Always yeah. is. Yeah, another one of the reasons why Model Blue Devotion just is incidentally very good against beatdown decks is they have stuff like Tidebinder Mage main deck to get Devotion, but it also just functions as like a main deck sideboard card against a lot of these decks. It is just so brutal, especially when things kind of work out perfectly where you're on the draw, and in this case, Snow took a mulligan, and you get to Tidebinder Mage's two drop and just keep that locked down until until the Tidebinder Mage leaves the battlefield, but it's not very likely it gets a green-white aggro deck. Makes it like a double mulligan virtually. Yeah. Snow's start is really good, though. I mean, Soldier in the Call of the Conclave in a Smiter. I mean, he's curving out. He's got big bodies out there. He just needs to keep pressing his advantage. Jessup's yeah, third land is a Muta Vault. Is this going to be a Thassa? Okay. That's... I mean, he's taking a turn off. Yeah. So not, not a super great thing to play this turn, but next turn, it doesn't take much to turn it on. And then he has this indestructible blocker. Attack for six. Jessup going to take six, going to go down to 10. Does Snow have a follow-up? More big creatures, perhaps. There's a Temple Garden untapped. And you know that something's following after that. It's Experiment 1. And call the Conclave. Going to evolve Experiment 1. So all of Snow's cards are out on the table. And now he's just hoping that this is enough. Maybe he works his way into an Ajani to jump something here, but Jessup knows what he's got to beat. And yeah. Now he's got to catch up. Yeah, this is what I got, man. Yep. Jessup does keep with the scry from Thassa pretty quickly. You see a master of waves in this hand. It can make four elemental tokens. And that's, you know, that's the backbreaking card against Green White. It's very tough for them to beat that one. Yeah, it's, it's tough just to attack through that. It's like you spent the first four turns of the game playing out all these things. Master Waves does that in one turn. Mm -hmm. The judge is familiar. Ah, uh, this has got to be a Nick, though, isn't it? Yep. Okay. I was like, that's a little strange, but this makes more sense now. As Nykthos provides four blue, and now here comes the master. So do a devotion check here of two, three, four, and five, which means Thoughts is online. Yep. That is the magic number. Yep. That means five two ones are going to come into play. And if you're Daniel Snow, uh, I would draw Banishing Light this turn. Yeah. And if he does, I think he might actually just win the game on the spot or very close to it. Yeah, turns off Thassa, leaves Jessup with a Judge's Familiar and a Tidebinder Mage, which are not going to be able to block very effectively. Now, Jessup is trying to figure out if he's going to attack her or not. Not sure if Snow remembered the trigger for the Judge's Familiar coming into play uh, from the Soldier of the Pantheon. 
The yeah. soldier trigger is like the hardest trigger in the world to remember. It is, it, especially for judges familiar. Like something out of a mono blue deck where it's like, oh, you know, I, I just kind of forget that that's multicolored. But also, Jessup did go kind of fast. No. So Jessup is deciding if he wants to attack or not this turn. Thos is kind of appealing to attack with. You can get in for that five points of damage. Yeah, it, this game is very much about whether or not Snow can draw a Banishing Light in time. And I really like Jessup's attack here, where it's like, yeah, keeping a 5-5 five, five indestructible guy on defense is really good, but you really need to close the door before you give Snow too many draw steps to find the card he needs. And next turn, I mean, he could potentially attack for lethal, depending on how much mana he can generate with Nykthos. Yeah. And just make, like, Thos unblockable, something else unblockable. You know, you don't have a creature to block in the air, and push through enough points of damage. And if I'm Daniel, I actually kind of like, like a chump block here, to maybe keep yourself alive, though, to be fair, you're trying to play towards Banishing Light anyway. Right. So how much does that help you? Yeah, because just chump blocking, like, yeah, it might give you a few more turns, but if you're not able to remove this Master Waves within the next couple turns, like, you're, you're still not going to be in a good spot. By, by that time, Thassa might just be turned back on already, and you're just in a, a bad position. But if, if you had Banishing Light that turn, you would want to set up a, a potentially lethal attack or at least make him have to chump block. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that was the case there after he jump blocked with the 3-3, three, three, so. Jessup, again, has five elemental tokens up there. He's got the Thassa, which is a 5-5. Five, five. He's trying to figure out how much mana he can generate. Again, Snow has three blockers, maybe a fourth one. I'm, it, you know, uh, if you're Jessup, you only have to play around like, you know, like one card. Adam and the Lord would get countered by Judge's Familiar anyway, so maybe a Boon Suit. Moon Seder is looming. So if, sure. you're, if you're Andrew, you're like, all right, I got to worry about four creatures back on defense. Can I attack through all of that? Yeah, I mean, you could say that also Selesnya Charm is a possibility, but I think if he had the Charm, he would have just used it on the Thassa immediately. Don't want to work counter spells into the equation at all? Well, also, you, you just let Jessup untap and use the unblockable ability of Thassa, too. Now Jessup is going in, into the counting tank. There's an island. Again, Nykthos right now is going to generate five mana. Jessup is, this is the turn where I feel like he's thinking, all right, can I actually lethal you this turn? I think uh, that I can. 16 is a lot. Eh, no doubt about it. This looks like it's going to be five. He's got another Master of Waves to play. He could also go like Frostburn with Master of Waves. Yeah, I guess since he has Muta Vault. Yeah, I think if he just unblockables Thassa and attacks with everyone and just doesn't play around a single thing, then he might have exactly lethal. But I also don't think he's in a rush, especially since he has the second Master of Waves. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have Judges Familiar to block a potential like a Johnny activation next turn. So. This one's going to be for six. Now it looks like, nope, not going to fire at Muta Vault, just going to make this unblockable. Again, those elemental tokens that can attack the five that can attack this turn are going to be three power creatures. Right. Because two masters are in play. And Jessup will get those organized to make sure he has the right ones that can attack and the ones that can't attack. And so now here's an attack, it looks like, with everybody. And again, Thassa is coming through unblocked, so Snow is at a virtual 11 at this point. So if he blocks the biggest creature, again, has three blockers. So that's three elemental tokens. Yep. So you have two left over, that's six. Tidebinder and Familiar is another three, that's nine. And then Master is the 11. 11 plus five is? 16. 16. Daniel, do you have a uh, do you have a thing? Some sort of thing. I'm not sure what sort of thing it, it could be. It's got to be like it, it's got to be Celestial Charm. Uh, I, it can't be Advent of the Worm because then the Judge Familiar will sacrifice and then it'll die, so it'll be a point short. Yep. But it looks like since we're going to blocks, this is probably just going to be it. Yeah. Yep. So there's the blocks, and I I, I don't imagine that Snow has Celestial Charm in his hand, so the damage is going to get counted up here. Yep, and that is going to do it. Andrew Jessup does win game number one here over Daniel Snow. We've got Mono Blue Devotion up a game here over Green White Aggro. And that is how Mono Blue preys on these green aggressive decks. Tidebinder Mage, lock down your two drop. Master Waves, can you deal with it? No? Well, here's a second one, yep. just in case.
And Snow's draw that game was good. I mean, we went turn one soldier, turn two, make a 3-3, three, three, turn three, make a 4-4, four, four, turn four, experiment one, make another call of the Conclave. Yeah. And that game wasn't particularly close. It wasn't, no. I mean, like, Jessup had the turn where he played Athasa and not much else, but just really closed the door with Master Waves. Yeah. That's what this deck tends to do against green white decks. Now, we will take a look at Daniel Snow's sideboard here at Archangel of Thune, two Skylasher, two Satessan Tactics, a Banishing Light, two Unflinching Courage, a Tristani Selesnia Voice, two Sundering Growth, a Rootborn Defenses, two copies of Miscutter Hydra, and a Giant's Presence. He's kind of all over the place here, but he's got a lot of tools that are good against Mono Blue. Yeah, and a lot of the stuff's redundant. So, like, you see two Skylasher, two Miscutter, and they're, they're good at different points in the game. So I understand that split. And, you know, basically he's just playing four protection from blue creatures. But Miscutter Hydra is a split card, you know, you want that later, so I can understand only playing two of that. Tactics, tactics excuse me, are probably cards five and six. Banning Light can be card number seven. Uh, the question I have for you, actually, is do you go a little bit bigger with Archangel, which is great in this matchup, Tristani, which is pretty good, but, like, a little difficult to cast, and then these Unflinching Courages? Uh, I think with four protection from blue guys, you... Like, that is probably your plan, is, like, try to stick a Courage on one of them. I can totally understand if he thinks that his sideboard is good enough that he doesn't have to try and assemble that on a pro blue guy. You know, if, if he likes Archangel and Tristani and things like that and thinks that he can control the game in that way and doesn't need the Courages to be, like, all-out aggressive, like, he's, you know, building a better board state, basically. Like, building his own Master Waves over the course of a few turns. Like, I could understand not having the Courages, but Tactics is certainly a card that he wants. Like, I think that is the matchup that it's there for. Yeah, I expect to see at least six cards come in here and Miss Cutter, Skylasher, and Tactics. The others are negotiable, right. I would say. Yeah, I think you want the Banishing Light, and then I do think you want the Archangel and Tristani as well. Okay. A lot of cards come in. Not sure which ones do come out here. For Mr. Jessup, what do you see? Uh, one Rapid Hybridization to go with the two he already has main deck. Two Dispel, three Gainsay, two Negate, one Cyclonic Rift, two Dissolve, two Domestication, and two Jace Architect with Thought. And... We've seen this all day. Mono Blue does not have a very versatile sideboard. There's a lot of counter spells, some stuff for other creature decks, and it just looks like a rapid, two domestications, maybe a rift. I don't think you want Jace in this matchup. Uh, it's generally good against the smaller creature decks, not really the the bigger or like medium-sized creature decks that Green White is. Uh, so one rapid, two domestications, maybe a cyclonic rift. And I don't expect to see him sideboard a lot because the matchup's already pretty good for him. Right. So Biden is one of those cards that is generally good against control decks, but not so great against other creature decks. Uh, so I'd expect that one to go. And then uh, I'm really not sure how most people sideboard in this matchup. I, I feel like there's just one of the four of creatures that comes out, but I'm not sure which one it is. Okay. It could be something like Cloudfin Raptor, maybe, or maybe Night Vale Spectre, because it's like a slower version of that. But uh, Really quickly before game number two does begin, we will talk about our Modern Premier IQs. Uh, again, we've been running these for a couple of weeks now. It began in Baltimore. Uh, they've all been won here by Overgrown Tomb decks. Uh, we've had two Black Green decks win, and we've had two Junk decks win. Now, what's great about this is we get to actually bring Modern now to the Open Series with these Premier Invitational Qualifiers, $5,000 in cash prizes, open points to all participants, top four will receive invitations, enhanced side event prizes, and a whole lot more. It has also kind of scaled back the time that we start the tournaments on Sunday. So today, this is our last round of coverage, and tomorrow morning we begin at 8 o'clock East Coast time, where we will cover the elimination rounds of our standard open and crown ourselves a champion. Our, our uh, legacy tournament will begin at 9 a.m., and then our Modern Premier IQ will begin at 10 a.m. So we're able to run three tournaments on Sundays, one of which is Modern. We know that you guys have wanted Modern on the Open Series for a while. We're glad that we're finally able to bring it to you. And the best thing of all, of course, is that if you're a local organizer and you want to run Premier events at your store, you can do that. Yeah. So not... They're not only on the Open Series. If you guys want to run Premier Invitational Qualifiers at your store, by all means, get in touch with Star City Games Organized Play Department. They're not hard to set up. It's pretty easy, just like our Elite IQs and our Star City Games Game Night. So get in touch. Again, you do see the prizes, the open points available. It's pretty fun stuff. Pretty, pretty good stuff here. Game number two going to be underway here between Jessup and Snow. And Snow will be on the play. Will he keep the seven is the question. As he is down a game here. It looks like Jessup is taking a mulligan. So he was not happy with the seven he found. But again, he's able to mulligan in this matchup because his cards undo mulligans very well. Tidebinder Mage as an example of that. Yeah, Master Waves especially. Yeah. Uh, so, so far today, we've seen a few mulligans to five. Tom Ross, I think, was the only one that won on the mull to five. Yeah. Have people been winning on, like, actual mulligans too? It always seems like the person that mulligans loses. Um, I'd have to think about it, actually. 
not positive on that. I feel like I've seen well, a winner or two on a I guess I guess Manfield kept his hand and then ended up <laughs> losing to his opponent at Mulligan. But yeah. It's like the, the standard decks are like they're not super fast. You know, they're not winning the game on turn four, but like they are certainly in a lot of command on turn four. So you have to be careful, like the, the types of hands that you choose to keep. You know, like if your hand is a little slow, maybe send it back. That type of thing. I think that's more of a more of Seth's hatred for mulliganing, where they think. Oh, well, I wasn't talking about Seth specifically, okay, but okay. just just in general that we've seen throughout the course of the day. I mean, Tom Ross's willingness to mulligan is commendable. Just willing to mulligan and just snap off one landers. Yeah, I love both. Right. One land, couple one drops. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I'll draw a land. What, what more do you want? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I will easily draw a land. Tom's like, I don't want to draw more than three lands per game. I've already basically met my quota. A bunch of islands over there. I'm gonna mute them all, so I think that might just be one spell for Jessup. He's got lands to cast them. He'll have to run them off in the right order. Though. Yeah, I mean, it is a master of waves, and there are certainly a lot of draws you could have. Like, if you draw a Frostburn Weirder Time Biter Mage on turn two, some sort of three drop on three, and then you play Master Waves, you're in a good spot. But uh, Jessup's in a pretty good matchup, and I feel like he feels that he can do better. And for Snow, I mean, if you get up to the start that you had the last game, when your opponent's on a mulligan to five, your chances of winning are a lot higher. So we'll see what happens here. He's able to curve out pretty well. I know this is the second green-white deck that we watched. The first one had four copies of Temple of Plenty. This one has two. It's very strange to say that, you know, Temple of Plenty may not belong in this deck, but, you know, the versions that have been doing very well are four Temple Gardens, four Manic Influence, and then the same amount of Forest and Planes. Yeah, eight and eight, generally. Yeah. I mean, Temple of Plenty is obviously a great Magic card, but this is not a deck that can afford to you know, play off curve for a turn for the most part. Right, and I think, I think Snow recognizes that. He is only playing two copies, and it, I think it's just one of those things where you recognize that your mana base has a lot of colored requirements, and you need some sort of fixing, and you have to draw the line somewhere, though. Like, you are an aggressive deck. You, you do want to curve out. Definitely can't play four, I think, at this point. I mean, I wish you could. I wish my aggro deck could play a scry land. Yeah. How about that? just that scry like I was to play on tab? Just the green-white one? Yeah, that's it. That's too good? Uh, as long as Tidebinder Mage and Lightbane Zombie are legal, I think that's okay. All right. See, I'm good with that. That, that sounds like a fair deal. Green-white has kind of gotten like the short end of the stick, so. Jessup, five cards. Up a game, see if he can find something he likes. There's at least one. Oh boy. Oh my. His the Nykthos. Is, his hand is two muta vaults. Nykthos. Cloudfin Raptor and something else. He's going to keep. Yeah, dude, I, I would keep this hand too. It's not pretty. I think he just peeled off an island. Yes, sir. Just had it the whole time. There's a Cloudfin Raptor. Kick it back. So this, this hand is almost strictly better than his six card hand. He has the Master Wave still. He has the lands to cast it, but he also has a one drop. And granted, you know, his lands don't really cast Frostburn Weird or anything like that, but I, I think he's much happier with this five than with the six he had. Mute Volt and just pass the turn back. Will Jessup over to Snow. Snow will draw a card. You saw Con the Con Call of the Conclave on turn two. So we'll likely have an attack here for three in just a moment. Time for a. S oh, okay. And Johnny. And that's, ooh, ooh drew the Hello. Game. So, right. so this is this is cool because I talked to Sam Black a little bit about this last week, about how such a big problem Satessin Tactics was and how you kind of have to board in something like Negate or Dispel just out of respect for that card alone. Now here's a Judge's Familiar. That's going to evolve the Cloud from Raptor. Jessup hasn't played a land yet this turn. We know he has one. There's a Muta Vault. Fire this up. Now we're getting aggressive. Who mulliganed here? Yeah, exactly. Pass the turn back over to Snow. That's a tie game at 17 apiece. Except we know that Jessup has a Master Waves waiting in the wings for next turn. <laughs> yep. And attack for three. Jessup's going to go down to 14. Snow going to play a Temple Garden untapped. He's going to go down to 15. Looks like he's got some spells to play. There's a Fleece Main Lion. 
I'm just gonna pass the turn back with the ability to cast the Selesnya charm. That smells like Skylasher to me. You think so? I mean, it could very easily be a charm, but as as a mono blue player, you know, like Skylasher is one of the, the easiest blowouts, I think. I mean, even if he's bluffing Skylasher here, which I think would actually be a really sweet play, I'm just like, all right, play my Temple Garden untapped, pass. You're like, you're not gonna attack. Yeah, I mean, is it worth it to play your garden untapped to bluff Skylasher to prevent two points of damage? You're kind of just breaking even there, except, you know, you put the fear in him. Yeah, I mean, he could play something that involves a Cloud from Raptor, so you're saving a point that way, because it can go from, like, if he plays Master, it goes from a 1-2 well, sure, to a 2-3. But then you might as well just attack with the Raptor, right? Because if he doesn't have it, then you get in two points. Uh, that's true. That's true. Four elemental tokens in the house. Three. I lied. Three. Now here's your attack for two. Yeah. Yeah. So now he missed out, or at least he gave away two points of damage. Well, I'm, okay. Like in theory, right? Yeah, like he yeah. Gave away two by I, I just assumed that like maybe Charm was coming that turn, but here's three mana. Yep, there's the banishing light, and it's very important for him to have that. And now here's an attack for six. Green creatures are pretty big. Uh, they don't waste much time closing the door. And why would you? You know, you have three power. Let's get in there. Jessup needs to draw another copy of Master of Waves. That's, I believe, his best draw right now. If he can draw one, he's in a pretty good spot, but he oh. needs to draw one. So this might be interesting. Maybe Snow is keeping open Charm to counter a potential domestication. Okay. Okay. The problem I have with that is just like there's the judges familiar just on the table. Oh yeah, that is true. Blocking the charm. Yeah. That's why I don't like paying the two life. He there. does have it. I also see a Satessin tactic, mm -hmm. so this looks like it could be a pretty good like charm and a turn, make a two two. And then either you can just attack with your three threes, because that's pretty good. Uh, or you can use tactics to potentially wipe Jessup's board. Just if one reaching maybe for a mutable activation here. Interesting. See, so very slowly taps that island, yeah. brings mutable forward. Maybe getting very aggressive here. Yeah, I mean the game is still relatively close. Like Jessup is down to eight, but Snow's also at thirteen. You know that that is pretty low. It doesn't take much. Just like a steady string of chump blockers, maybe, or like a cyclonic rift to to bounce that centaur token along with something that blocks the lion maybe something that evolves cloudfin raptor or whatever so i feel like there's a decent amount of merit to jessup like not wasting points of damage in this spot jessup just attacking with the muta vault before passing the turn back snow's gonna untap take a draw in his hand right now slesian charm it's a test and tactics he just added a planes to it so he will deploy the planes. And so he wants to use these two fantastic spells. Looks like it's going to be a tactics. So he wants to clear some things out of the way, it looks like to me. Yeah. And that's not bad. I mean, it looks like Jessup was setting up for a double block, like Mutavolt and Cloudfin Raptor are probably on the Centaur, almost certainly not on the Fleece Main Lion because it can just go monstrous at any point. But at that point, wouldn't you rather use Selesnya Charm maybe, like save the tactics for the scarier things? Uh, like Master of Waves, I guess, is not super effectual if you're just tacticsing all of his guys away. But Yeah, and to be fair, like, you know, by tacticsing the things away now, your Master of Waves, the Master of Waves is, you know, not scary anymore. Yeah. So tactics get strived once. Cloud from Raptor bites the dust. Four damage comes across the fleece main line. Jessup goes down to four. With Celestia Charm still in the holster. Still want to see how Snow wants to use the charm for next turn. Jessup. Don't have a great look at what's in his hand, but he will play an island, so he's just got one mystery card hanging out. I think he just still has that Nyctos. Ah, right, from earlier. 
And all he can do is just pass the turn back to Muta and Judge Smiller. That's it. Snow will draw. Again, we know he's got the charm. The swings in this game have been pretty unreal, where we thought, like, Snow was off to a really good start. And then Jessup had that negate on turn two to counter the Ajani. Yeah, I was surprised to see that. Yeah, and then he he ran that into Master Waves, but then it just kind of all fell apart once he got Banishing Light. I don't think he's drawn a spell since then. It was six man, what is this? Oh, probably Hydra. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, something that does not get judges familiar. To. Yeah. I was like, what is this super expensive spell that costs more than five mana? Oh, no. The X spell. Yeah. The split card. Red zone. I mean, we could see, you know, two Muta Vaults go in front of Fleece Mainline, Judge's Familiar Chump Block. Actually, that's not going to do it because it's a four. So Muta Vault has to get in front of Miss Cutter now. This, I don't think, I don't think good blocks exist. No. You, yeah, you put Muta Vault in front of Miss, Cut Miss Cutter and then another Muta Vault and Judge's Familiar in front of Fleece Mainline. Take three down to one, but your entire board is decimated. They still have a giant pro blue creature. You're probably on a no for at that point. Yeah. Yeah, this is Jessup's first block. This is his second. And he's not even getting Fleece Main line off the table, so nothing's leaving the table for Snow. Yeah, so he's he's basically on a no for now. He will untap that island and draw a card here, but I am fairly sure there's not a card that exists as he draws an island, so that's certainly not it. Yeah. Island is powerful. It's not that powerful. What well, could argue the best land in Magic? Best basic, I would hope. It could just be the best land. Eh. Debatable. Pass the turn back. Old Jessup. Looks like we're going to play one more turn here. A snow will untap. He will draw a card. Get Aether Spouched. <laughs> that's an Ajani. That's overkill. Yeah, that's definitely overkill. He's at one life. <laughs> all, of, all of your creatures are lethal. Flying and double strike, this blue creature. Attack with everything. Let's a play a third game. Aether yeah. Spouts you. Aether Spouts, yeah. Daniel Snow and Andrew Jessup are going to game number three. But unfortunately for Daniel, Jessup will be on the play this go around. Yeah. Daniel showed off the power of his sideboard cards in that game for sure, where while the tactics might not have done a ton, it certainly did its job. You know who we've seen two times today? Only twice. Andrew Boswell. In the background, watching, watching. as a fellow green-white player yep. plays on. We saw him in round one, stand behind Reed when Reed was beating green-white, and now we see him standing behind Daniel Snow. Does, does he know when there's green-white in the future match area? Just a, a careful observer. Yeah. Better you you got to imagine white. he's just like, good job, buddy. Better win, green-white. 5-5 five, five miss cutter. Nice work. I'm going to tear the rest of these sleeves off my shirt. <laughs> what? There are none left. There's just a little bit. No, maybe he'll rip Snow's sleeves off. Wow, that would be good. Yeah. That'd be really good. If he wins, just rip him off. You're part of the team. Team Toy <laughs> wins. Don't know how Boswell's tournament went this weekend. He's obviously looking on, and we know that he's not going to make the top eight. Uh, I imagine he played green-white again, though. He's been on a bit of a heater. He got second place in Baltimore and then second place at the Grand Prix. Yeah, that is true. And I really liked his deck in the Grand Prix, too. Yeah, he played Jund. Yeah, I mean, you say that, it's like, oh, well, that's boring. But he had a main deck Lava Mancer, a main deck Olivia Voldaren, and he was, like, pretty well set up to deal with all the junk decks playing Lingering Souls and the Birthing Pod decks, which I thought was really good. I mean, that's a good place to be. I mean, one could argue those are the two best decks in Modern. Exactly. Like, two best archetypes. Right. Yeah, and Ol Olivia just is against both those decks. Yeah, yeah, Olivia's lights out. As long as you can play it, like, on a stable board, I mean, it's going to catch you up really fast. Yeah. Yeah, so I really liked his deck. Eventually, you know, lost to the junk deck with Lingering Souls, but what are you going to do? Can't beat them all. Yeah. I imagine he beat, like, that deck a couple times over the course of the tournament. I would assume so. Or at least some Birthing Pod decks, you know? Well, you have to beat those to get through. <laughs> right. Get to the finals. Most played deck. I don't know when Birthing Pod's going to get axed, but I'm going to keep playing it until it does. You, you've seen the ways, huh? I, yeah. think, I think I have to start playing. I have a lot of lists in my notebook that are just like, I want to figure out exactly like what the right configuration of creatures are because you have so many options as far as like spicy one-ofs, right? And it would be nice if someone would get it right 
because like they're like you can copy like Sam Pardee's deck, and that's that's a reasonable place to start at the very least. But for the most part, people's decks differ very heavily. Yeah, it's like which one's right, which one's wrong. Yeah, like what bullets are appropriate for what reasons. Right, and a lot of that is just like up to your discretion. Like what what decks do you think you're gonna play against? What things do you find yourself needing in certain situations? Like I've had people be adamant that like the Archangel Spike Feeder combo is necessary, Malira is not. I've had people go the other way. I've had people say that they like them both. Some people live and die by Phyrexian Metamorph. Other people are just like, it's garbage, cut it. Yeah, I, I was gonna cut Archan uh, Glenelg or Archmage, not Archangel. The Archmage from my deck for the PTQ last yeah. week. And everyone's just like, you're crazy. You're crazy, what are you doing? Huh? I think I think that's one card that helps you out in so many matchups that, that that's like the perfect bullet. So like, what I per, like what I was predicting the people at the PT were gonna be playing was not good against those decks. It is good against like a wide swath of decks, but like for the metagame I thought was gonna be there, which was like Yeah, but you realize you're playing modern, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. There are a lot of decks. That's why I ended up playing it again. Okay. Is because like even though I think everyone's gonna play like, you know, black green, junk, pod decks, which like Arch Ar Archmage isn't very good against, it's like, well, I could just play against like, you know, Infect. And like it's good there. Right. And some, and some other decks. So I went back to playing it, and it was, like, pretty good. So I was glad that I played it. I played against a lot of Splinter Twin in the Northwest, so I don't know. Jessup and Snow, game number three. Jessup looking at his opening hand. This is a big game. This might be the definition of a big game. Yeah. Whoever wins this is playing tomorrow morning. There's only room for one. And they're both keeping their hands, so let's have some fun. Just yeah, an island should, and pass the should turn Should be back. a good one. Forest, experiment one. Bang. Out of the gates very quickly. Is it tie binder mage time? <laughs> Off the top. Uh, good place for it. Yep, yeah, shut that down. Anytime tie binder mage gets value, it just feels. Yeah, you don't unfair. expect it, right? Yeah. Kind of evolve there, pass the turn back. It's like, well, this this grizzly bear that is hard to cast makes all my other cards better, but when it effectively kills your guy too when it enters the battlefield, that's pretty good. Yeah. Jess up with an island. That's gonna be mute evolved instead. Excuse me. See if this is gonna be one of those Thassa turns again. He's just gonna pass. Mm. Suspicious. That was a negate last time. Here's an attack for two. Damage will come across. Yes, it will go down to 18. If I were Snow, I would just be very uncomfortable always. Just in this matchup? Yeah. It's just like every, like most of the cards that Jessica can play are just like, ugh. I mean, like, you know, when your opponent has three mana on tap, it's like kind of scary. You saw Snow did pass the turn back before evolving, so. Yeah. It's going to stay as a 2-2. Two, two. The, the likelihood of that Tide Binder Mage leaving the battlefield is not very high anyway. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you want to keep it tight. You yeah. want to make sure you hit all your triggers, and, and you never know what could happen. That Tide Binder Mage could have to chump block at some point, and then you'll be happy that you evolved that experiment one. Is it Master or Domestication? It's... I think you want to domesticate that lion. Yep. I'll be taking this, thank you. Not great against the Soldier of the Pantheon. But still a 3-3 creature, reasonable, adds a reasonable body to the clock and takes away from Snows, so not the worst. An attack for two. Going to tie things up at 18. Snow will play a forest. That's land number four. This is three mana. Feels like maybe a Banishing Light could be in a Johnny, but he's going to slow down and unwind here. Yeah, it is. it does have a Banishing Light, and... This could be one of those things where it's like, oh man, I want to banish like that domestication so badly, right? But then what happens if he plays a Master Waves? Yeah. Am, am I just cold then? Nightmare. Like, can I afford to wait, or do I actually need this Lion back in order to win the game? Well, there's Banish Lion, so he's casting it to get the Lion back right now. Now, there are more answers to Master after sideboard, so that's Dactus being one of them. Right. So he could have that in the grip. And if that's the case, he definitely wants a lion on his side. Yeah. You know, that, that's well worth a Banishing Light because not only do you take the lion away from Jessup, you get it back, and then you can use it to fight an additional creature with tactics a few turns later. Jessup draws. Looks like he's flooding out a little bit. I mean, he's got Master in his hand, but this also looks like there's a couple of lands over there. 
if he's going to deploy one of those islands. Yeah, this looks like it might be master time. Yeah, this is not the best master of waves we've ever seen. It's only for three. Yeah, but then again, you look at Snow's side of the field, and those elementals basically trade up with all of his creatures, you know? That's pretty good for one card. Just whether or not Snow actually has an answer for it. I think he just drew a Vanishing Light. Yeah, that's that's an answer. That, you are right. Temple Garden going to come to play on tap. Snow's going to go down to 16. This is, this is, ooh. Monstrosity. On the, oh, wow. On the stack, going to wrap at that. That was an aggressive Monstrosity. Yeah. A little surprised. Frog Lizard incoming, evolution on experiment one, as a 3-3 does come into play. No real great attacks here. Soldier, I don't think, wants to work its way through those waters, so just pass the turn back. Yeah, not really. Not, especially not if your plan is to Banishing Light the Master on a subsequent turn. You really don't want to trade anything for an Elemental. I believe another island there for Jessup. A little bit of flooding from the Mono Blue Devotion deck. Can Snow work his way through a poor matchup? Looks like Jessup may be getting aggressive here. Going to fire up the Muta Vault and attack here as it is a 3-3. A very, very quick block will allow for a trade. One card you see in Jessup's hand right now, he actually has a Dispel. Like I said, man, you got to respect the Destin Tactics, mm -hmm. but Dispel also has a pretty reasonable amount of targets. Uh, in, in Snow's deck as well. Advent the Worm if you want to keep that in. Selesnya Charm, like, for a mostly creature-based beatdown deck, you have a lot of targets for Dispel. It's Banishing Light. Very quickly going to be targeting Master of Ways if it resolves, and it does. So there go the Elemental Tokens. This is a relatively safe attack, so in we come for two. Jessup shrugs his shoulders, says, yeah, I'll take two, I'm at 14. Is there a follow-up play here for Snow? There is not. So Jessup will untap. His hand right now is Island and Dispel. He will draw a card. I believe it was another Island. Yikes. A draw that started off so promising with Tidebinder Major Master Waves, and he's starting to wear it a little bit. Yeah. You can definitely tell that, you know, there's some frustration here, because I imagine, you know, Jessup, in the first game, he's playing against Rio, he's like, okay, perfect. Yeah, this is exactly where I want to be. This is perfect. This is the matchup, yeah. right? Here comes Soldier again. Down to 12. Just a baby experiment one. Snow passes the turn back. He's been holding a Slesnia charm for some time now. Jessup will draw. Didn't get a great look. Mutavolt. Yep. Yeah. That helps. Not the perfect card. It's better than nothing. Better than nothing, yeah. After drawing a string of islands two games in a row, Mutavolt, you're just like, thanks, buddy. I, I appreciate you showing up. Snow going to play Mana Confluence. He's attacking for two. Will Mutavolt maybe feel like trading here? Uh, I mean, I think you want to, right? Like, uh, you, you can't Celestia Charm the Soldier. Since it's pro multicolored, so... You got to be pretty sure that this is a clean trade. And, you know, your Mutavolt's not really getting any better. And you just want to preserve your life total. When you're Jessup, you have powerful cards in your deck like Domestication, Thassa, and Master Waves. You just want to buy time and try and draw into some of those cards. The trade does occur. Jessup will draw. Again, didn't get a great look at it. And we know he has an island over there. It looks like he has some interest in playing it. Yeah, there's there's not really a whole lot of point. Like, he's, he's shown negate and rapid hybridization. Like, you get a decent amount of value from holding cards in your hand past a certain point, especially since this green-white deck has Cyclonic Rift at 7, but, you know, nothing else really that's super expensive. Yeah, I think what he's doing is he's taking, like, a really long turn, and he's trying to, like, okay, I drew something. You know, he's trying to bluff right. a little bit, like, okay, I drew something. I'm not going to play this land. This card that I drew actually matters. Here's some mana. What do we got here? 
There's Najani. Can't dispel that one. Nope. Jessup Straw last turn was an island. So I'm gonna need another white mana for that. There we go. That's all fixed. Start evolving this experiment one the hard way. What do yeah. you think? Yeah, I like attacking, because if he trades with the Tie Binder Mage, your bigger experiment one gets unlocked. Right. So Jessup takes two more, draws a card. I think that was a Tide Binder. If it was, that's a good one. I mean, yeah. get to start attacking the Sajani, lock down his other creature. The attack is going towards Ajani. Yeah, and Snow's been very patient with the Celestia Charm. Unfortunately, Jessup has had this dispel virtually the entire game. Yep. So he's a good, clean answer to that. Down to three. And it's Tidebinder. So now both those experiment ones have been locked down. Let's see what Dano can draw this turn. He's got a lot of good draws in his deck right now. Didn't get a great look at that one, but he's reaching for mana right away. It's Fleecebane. Fleecebane might be the best draw. Yep. Yeah, that one's really good. Just pump that one up, monstrous it right away. Yep. He's going to take one to do so. But well worth it. Oh, in yeah. This, in the grand scheme of things. Oh, yeah. That's on the stack. Jessup's going to try to bluff a rapid hydrization here, but, you know. Let's, let's be real. <laughs> if, yeah. If you had it, you would have played it. You would have cast it already. And put a counter on there. So now it's a 5-5, and that means it's presenting lethal on the very next turn due to a Johnny. Yeah, Hexproof is pretty good with flying and double strikes yeah, as well. Not, not bad, pretty safe. Jessup's going to draw a card. This is where Jessup wants to play the seventh land and put the Fear of Cyclonic Rift into him, potentially, but uh, if, if you're in snow spot, I'm not sure there's much you can do, you know? If, if you don't go for the win, uh, end of your turn, he could potentially overload Cyclonic Rift, get his Master Ways back, and just kill you from there, so. Yeah, I think you're just going for it. Right. But if you're Jessup, at least make him think about it, yeah. you know? You play the seventh land, there's, you know, a small percentage chance that Snow outthinks himself. Right. I mean, I guess one of the things that Jessup could do this turn is send both Tidebinders at the Ajani, put it to two loyalty, and uh, next turn he can't give his thing flying in double strike, but he does unlock one of his experiment ones. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that actually saves him in the long run, maybe gives him an extra turn. I think that's what he's kind of deci deciding right now is if I attack with both my tie binders, yeah, I get to knock it down to two, but then at the very least, you know, experiment one gets to attack me. Now, Snow did forget to evolve that other experiment one again. That kind of oh, matters that, that a little bit. That is true. That is true. Yep. Chooses correctly. Yep. So that giant is going to go down to two. Jessup's going to play a land. Just pass the turn back. He doesn't, he doesn't die on this turn. But does he have any outs? Maybe Cyclonic Rift does some things, but... Johnny's going to take up. Yep, that's a really good place to put a counter. That's in for six, seven, eight, nine. Jessup is going to go down to one. Does still have a follow-up play? Three mana? Yeah, Smiter's fine. It's going to evolve both of these. Mmm. Missed lethal. Yep. Yep. Now presenting three lethal attackers with a Johnny. And Jessup's draw for the turn was a Frostburn weird. And it's an unfortunate time for Jessup to flood out as badly as he did, but... Yeah, I mean, two, two games in a row that... Otherwise, we're like pretty interactive and pretty good. But you see Green White take down the, the supposed bad matchup, you know? Yeah, that's like that's kind of the story here where